Hello everyone. In the last few lectures, we talked about microwave power dividers where we had seen two way, three way, four way power divider and we had also seen unequal power divider. Today we are going to talk about microwave couplers. So, let us start with the first one which is a coupled line directional coupler. So, first of all what is really a directional coupler? Let me just explain that part. So, let us think about that there is a one microstrip line which is going here. Let us say we are giving an input here and the output is taken from here. And let us think about one of the application that a power amplifier is connected to an antenna and antenna is transmitting. Now, supposing that if we look at a telecom sector application where they transmit about 20 watt of power and that is transmitting through the antenna. Now, how do we ensure that it is exactly 20 watt or it is less or more? So, what we do? We can use something like this which is known as a directional coupler. The concept is simple that if we have a current carrying conductor and if we put a another wire next to that, so what will happen? The current is flowing through this in this direction and there will be induced EMF which will be coming through this one here. So, the same thing let us see over here. So, we are giving an input here. This is known as port 2 which is a through port or also known as coupled port. So, this is where the directly coupled port is there. Now, because of this particular flow there will be an induced EMF which will be like this. So, this is known as coupled port and generally this particular coupled line directional coupler is good for typical range is minus 10 dB to about minus 30 dB. Of course, minus 40 dB is possible and also minus 6 dB or minus 5 dB or minus 8 dB is possible, but generally we do not design this particular coupler for less than minus 10 dB. The reasons will be obvious after we cover the basic concept of this. So, again, so if we are feeding it over here, this is the coupled power which is going through here or this is known as isolated port which is port number 4. And generally what we want is that S41 should be as large as possible. So, let us look at the basic concept, but however, to do the analysis of this particular thing, you can see that this is a four port problem. So, this four port problem can be divided into two, two ports problem. What we do here is that think about if we draw a line over here, we can say that with respect to this line this particular configuration is symmetrical. So, if we say that this one here is 1, so this will be 1 port, 2 port and this is a symmetrical port. So, we can apply the concept of the symmetry. So, what do we do in that? So, just to give you a little bit of an idea. So, what we want to do here, let us say input is 1 and the input at all these other ports is 0. So, now applying only input of 1, suppose we say that we apply input of half here and half here. So, plus half plus half actually gives us a even mode symmetry. Then we do the second time plus half apply here minus half apply here. So, now that is known as odd symmetry and then the final analysis is done that you take the sum of these two things. So, we have taken plus half plus half. So, that will be equal to 1 and here we have taken plus half and minus half. The sum of that will be equal to 0. However, many a times when we talk about S parameter, we generally talk about input as 1. So, we give a plus 1 here, plus 1 here, then this will be even mode. In the second case, we give plus 1, we give minus 1, that is a odd symmetry and then we take the average of the two. So, plus 1, plus 1 divided by 2 and then plus 1, minus 1 divided by 2. So, that will be 0, this will become 1. So, let us look at what are these odd mode and even mode things. So, here the same coupled lines are shown slightly different way now. So, coupled lines are actually shown here. So, this is the one microstrip line and there is another microstrip line kept next to that. So, now as I said even mode excitation. So, assuming that this is plus 1 fed air, plus 1 fed air and for odd mode excitation what we are going to do? We will say plus 1 here and minus 1 over here. So, now you can apply concept of the charge theory. So, if there is a plus charge here, plus charge here. 
so that will be the field distribution and over here we can say current will be equal to zero a zero current at this particular periphery can be also termed as h wall or magnetic wall so let's see from here we can say the equivalent capacitance so let's say c11 is the equivalent capacitance for this particular microstrip line and c22 is the equivalent microstrip for this most of the time these two will be identical so we can say c11 will be equal to c22 now this capacitance is shown over here but that capacitance won't be there because there is an open circuit however when we look at the odd mode excitation now let's say this is plus 1 this is minus 1 so there will be field going from here to here so just think about if this is a plus 1 voltage and this is a minus 1 voltage here we have a 0 volt 0 volt is equivalent to short circuit and short circuit can be represented by electric wall okay so now in this particular case we will have this capacitance c11 we will have a capacitance c22 but from here to here there will be equivalent capacitance which is actually let's denote as c12 but here we have shown that as 2c12 in series with 2c12 so in series we know that capacitances get divided so the equivalent capacitance will be c12 and this is one since it is a shorted wall so that is going to ground so one can see that in case of the even mode the equivalent capacitance of this line will be let's say c11 but for odd mode equivalent capacitance will be c11 in parallel with 2c12 so that means the equivalent capacitance here will be c11 plus 2c12 so now we will define even mode and odd mode impedances but first let's just look at conceptually so we know that impedance is given by 1 over j omega c so compared to this this capacitance is going to be large so if the capacitance is large that means z equal to 1 by j omega c will be small so for this if we define even mode impedance and for this we define odd mode impedance so since odd mode impedance has larger capacitance odd mode impedance in general is smaller than the even mode impedance so coupling is maximum when the length of the coupled line is equal to lambda by 4 we will see some simulated results and then i will show you what happens when the length is different but just to tell you the derivations are there in many of the books you can have a quick look into that but here we want to tell you the concept part so coupling is maximum for l equal to lambda by 4 and then for desired coupling this is the expression given okay so odd mode impedance and even mode impedances are given by this now this formula is valid for l equal to lambda by 4 not valid for any other value of l okay because we are designing it for maximum coupling so let's see what we have here so this is a even mode impedance which is equivalent to characteristic impedance of the line multiplied by you can see over here c is coming in the numerator here c is in the denominator plus and minus sign is there and these two are reversed so we can say that since the numerator has a plus sign this value will be greater than z o o of course if coupling is negligible in that case we can say z o e will be equal to z o o and the characteristic impedance then is defined as a you can say square root of z o e and z o o so z o e and z o o are even and odd mode characteristic impedance so now let's just look at the design so for z0 is equal to 50 ohm we substitute here and then c now i have put here c minus 6 minus 10 minus 20 minus 30 but i just want to also mention that many a times they talk about 10 db coupling or 20 db coupling so when they say 10 db coupling that does not mean that you will get uh, more power or 20 db coupling means more power no that is just a notation they generally use that coupling is 10 db but in reality coupling is minus 10 db and this coupling is basically ratio of voltages so what you have to do to find the numeric value you apply to this 20 log of this value which is equal to minus 20 db 
okay so please ensure that don't apply 10 log formula for this because 10 log of 0.1 this will be minus 10 dB so which is not correct you have to use 20 log 0.1 which is minus 20 dB. So for the desired value of coupling we first find the numeric value of C then we substitute these values over here and then calculate even mode and odd mode impedances which are given over here okay. So just to bring to your attention as you can see the coupling is reduced okay from minus 6 to this you can say ZOE is also reducing whereas if the coupling reduces ZOO is increasing and you can see that as the coupling becomes weak okay instead of minus 30 if we take minus 40 you will see that these two impedances will become approximately equal and the reason for that is let us say I have a one coupled line and the another line is put quite far away. So, if the other line is put far away then what will happen the coupling between the two will be very very small. So, whatever is the characteristic impedance of this line will now be equal to Z0. The characteristic impedance of this line will also be equal to Z0. However, when we bring them closer then we will have even more than odd mode impedances. So, now for minus 10 dB just remember these two number. So, ZOE is 69.4, ZOO is 36. Now, we will take a design example for these values of even and odd mode impedances. So, these are coupled microstrip line even mode and odd mode impedances. So, what we have the curve here even mode is shown on this side and odd mode impedance is shown on this side. Now, you see multiple these lines over here we will try to make things simple for you. So, here what it shows here S by D. So, S is the gap between the coupled line and D is taken as depth of this particular substrate. I just want to mention some books use the symbol D, some books use the symbol H. So, for D is the depth and H is H height of the substrate. Okay. So, one can see that here S by D is increasing. So, as S by D increases what we can see at this point you can say Z even mode is higher and Z odd mode impedance is relatively lower, but as we go on increasing the value of S by D you can see that Z even mode decreases and Z odd mode increases. So, we can say now that as S by D increases ZOE decreases and ZOO increases. Now, let us just look at what are the other plots here. So, here is the plot of W by D. W by D is increasing this way. You can see that if W by D is increased from let us say 0 0.1 to let us say 1, one can see that from here if you look at corresponding value of even mode and odd mode impedances, they are relatively higher compared to if you look at the Z even mode and odd mode impedances corresponding to W by D equal to 1. So, we can say that as W by D increases both even mode and odd mode impedance decrease. So, now recall from the previous example for 10 dB coupling. Now, you can see that I have not written here minus 10 dB, okay, but it should be obvious that coupling is going to be less. This is just a general nomenclature. 10 dB coupling or 20 dB coupling. So, that is why I wrote there, but please remember C is equal to minus 10 dB and for that we had seen Z even mode was 69.4 and odd mode was 36 ohm. So, let us try to locate this on this particular curve here. So, this is 69.4. So, we draw a line from here close to 70 draw horizontal line and then 36 ohm. So, corresponding to 36 ohm we draw a vertical line see this value. So, from here we can read the value of S by T you can say it is 0.4. So, that is S by T equal to 0.4 and this particular point corresponds to so you can see here W by D is this particular curve for 0.7 and this is 1. So, you can say that this is approximately 0.75. I just want to mention so this particular curve is not for all values of epsilon r this is specifically given for epsilon r equal to 10 and z0 equal to 50 
ohm. Now, this is about even mode and odd mode impedances. Similarly, we have even mode and odd mode dielectric constant also. So, this is the curve for even mode epsilon e. So, what we have here, let us see, these are the different values along this, it is w by h is increasing along this axis and s by h is increasing along this axis and this one here is a even mode effective dielectric constant. So, this plot is for even mode for epsilon r equal to 9.6. So, let us see if we increase w by h along this thing, you can see that the epsilon e is increasing. Okay. So, we can say safely as w by h increases, epsilon e increases and that should be obvious. And if you recall as the width of the microstrip line increases, so what happens? The more wave is confined within the dielectric and we had also taken a general case if w by h becomes infinity, then epsilon e becomes epsilon r. So, as w by h increases, epsilon e increases. Now, you can see that these are the values for s by h, s by h is increasing. So, let us see here as s by h increases in the beginning, the relation is almost close to flat, but for larger value of the gap s by h greater than 1, you can see that these values are decreasing. Of course, there is a little bit of a different variation for very small values of it. But in general, we can say as s by h increases beyond certain value, epsilon e decreases. Now, let us look at the odd mode epsilon 0. So, again the plot is for same value of epsilon r equal to 9.6. So, see here what we have odd mode epsilon 0 is shown over here. This is s by h and this is w by h. So, we can see again as w by h increases, we can see that the epsilon 0 keeps on increasing. So, we can safely write now as w by h increases, epsilon 0 increases. Now, this is here s by h increasing along this particular axis. So, we can say that as s by h increases, we can see that epsilon 0 also increases. However, when we do the analysis, we do not really speaking take all the time even mode or odd mode epsilon 0. What we take generally is effective value of the dielectric constant and that is given by square root of epsilon e multiplied by epsilon 0. So, even mode and odd mode, you multiply them, take a square root and that will be epsilon effective. So, this is the value which is generally used for designing the coupled microstrip line. So, let us just take an example now. So, here is an example where we have taken a microstrip line which is for coupling equal to minus 20 dB. So, please do not get confused. Sometimes I write minus 20 dB or sometimes write 20 dB. So, generally speaking remember they do write coupling equal to 20 dB, but it is always minus 20 dB. So, here the design, let us see what we have done. So, we have designed this coupler for 800 to 1000 megahertz frequency range. This basically covers the, you can say GSM 900 band as well as CDMA band also. So, we have taken a low cost substrate because this is required for commercial application, which is very price sensitive. So, here normal glass epoxy substrate or which is also known as FR4 substrate. So, epsilon r is 4.4, thickness is 0.8 mm, tan delta is 0 0.02. So, for this we have to calculate the length. So, length should be equal to lambda by 4. So, if you take approximate the center frequency is 900 megahertz. At 900 megahertz, wavelength is 33 centimeter. 33 divided by Four will be let us say approximately 8 centimeter, then divided by square root of epsilon e comes out to be about 46 mm. So, width of the line is 1.5 mm. In fit, if this particular width is almost same as a microstrip line width for 50 ohm, okay, because the gap is relatively large, you can say here the gap is 1 mm because the coupling is for minus 20 dB. 
So now let's see the results. You can see here, this is the plot for the coupling. And one can note that coupling is maximum around this frequency, which is about 0 0.9 gigahertz. And because we had designed this whole thing for 900 megahertz. So you can see that the coupling is maximum here around 900, which is lambda by 4. Coupling is minimum around 1.8 gigahertz, which corresponds to L equal to lambda by 2. And then again, coupling becomes maximum at 3 lambda by 4 and that curve will keep on repeating. So, we need to focus at this particular point. So, now let us see what are the other plots over here S11. So, S11 is this plot in the purple color. So, one can see that S11 is very good. It is less than minus 35 dB over this very large bandwidth. Now let us see what is S21, S21 is this curve here, you can see that S21 is also relatively flat which is around 0 0.2 dB. Ideally it should have been 0 dB, but because we have taken a lossy substrate and also there will be small radiation from these lines, hence it is about 0.2 dB, but still it is very small. You can see here this is the coupling value which is 20.6 dB. So, even though you may say we had designed it for 20 dB, this is 20.6 which is very very close to that. However, just to tell you instead of taking 1 mm, if you take 0 0.9 something mm, then you can get minus 20 dB. We did not optimize this particular thing further, I will tell you the reason and the reason is the last curve here which is the blue curve. Now, this blue curve is nothing but you can say S41, which I had mentioned earlier, it is supposed to be an isolated port. An isolated port should have ideally minus infinity dB or maybe minus 50 dB or minus 100 dB, but you can see it is only minus 23 dB. Now, we will define a term directivity. Now, directivity defined here is the difference between the coupling and the isolation. Okay. Generally, we take a magnitude of that and the difference over here if we see it is just about 2.4 dB which is very very poor. Ideally, we would like this directivity to be 30 dB or 40 dB or more. Uh, I just want to tell I mean if you have taken an antenna course, in fact we are going to cover antennas later on, there we are going to define directivity in a different way, there the directivity will be something similar to gain of the antenna. Here please do not mix up with that, it is not the gain of the antenna or gain of the microstrip line or a coupler, here directivity is as simple as the difference between C and I and this is very poor. Okay. So, as I said, generally we would like directivity to be high. In fact, if you read some of the books, they do mention that if you design a coupled microstrip line, this the isolated port value may be of the order of minus 100 dB and so on. But as you can see, it is not so good. The reason for that is that the microstrip line configuration, especially when you take a different epsilon r than one value, then what happens because of this different epsilon r than 1. So, epsilon odd mode and epsilon even mode values will be different. Okay? Whereas, when we do the calculation, we take epsilon effective. So, for odd mode as well as for even mode, the epsilon effectives are different. So, the lengths behave differently for even mode and odd mode values. Hence, it is generally speaking, microstep lines are not very good when it comes to the directivity. Okay? So, one should think about the alternate thing, the two possibilities are there. One is if we use a very small value of epsilon r. Suppose you use epsilon r close to 1, which will be like an air substrate. So, if you use air, then what happens? Even mode and odd mode epsilon will be exactly same, you can get a better directivity. So, just to illustrate that, here is an example using strip line. So, what is a strip line? As I had mentioned when I talked about transmission line, a micro strip line requires only one substrate. So, we have a ground plane, 
and we etch a micro strip line. Whereas a strip line has a another substrate put on top of that and their top one will be now ground plane. Here the bottom is ground plane. So here what we have done, the strip line has been used in a slightly different fashion. Here we have used epsilon r equal to 1. So this is air okay. and 2 h which is the total thickness of the strip line is about 8 mm which is from ground to ground. And here since it is epsilon r equal to 1 which is air, what we have actually taken? We have actually taken a metallic plate of thickness 1 mm. So now metallic plate is taken here, another metallic plate is taken thickness of 1 mm, width is given over here which is about 6.9 mm and the gap between the two which looks very small over here is about 0 0.6 mm. So these two metallic plates are kept in parallel with each other and fed at the ends. Okay. So now there are these four ports are there. So let us see what results we get over here. So let us see S11 which is less than minus 44 dB over this entire frequency range which is from 0 0.5 to 1.5. You can see here this is a minus 40 dB line and this is minus 45 dB. You can see that S11 is less than minus 44 dB. So that is absolutely fantastic. Let us look at S21. S21 is 0.5 dB and you can see that it is relatively flat. Now you may think that oh S21 is large which is 0.5 dB so insertion loss is more. No that is not correct. Actually if you define coupling as 10 dB then approximately 0.5 dB will go to the direct port. Okay. So there is actually speaking no additional loss and by using a strip line configuration we have also ensured that there are no radiation losses because there is a ground at the bottom, ground at the top and we also enclose the whole thing in a box. Okay. Now here S31 is actually equal to minus 9.3 dB. Again you might wonder well we had a design objective of minus 10 dB, here we are getting minus 9.3 dB. I just want to mention that uh, this design is still better. The reason for that is that we are getting from here to here minus 9.3 dB. Okay? But then we will be connecting connectors at the two ends. So connectors may have a loss of 0.2 dB or even 0.3 dB depending upon the quality of the connector or maybe even the connected coaxial lines also will have some additional losses. So this S31 effectively may lead to approximately minus 10 dB. Now let us see what is S41 here. S41 here is less than minus 50 dB over this entire range. You can see that this is the minus 50 dB line. So over this, this is less than that. So let us see what is directivity. You can see that the difference between this and this is about 40 dB. So that is a very good value of the directivity. Let us take one more example. Now here the example is for coupling of 30 dB. Okay. So for 30 dB we have kept all the other things same, frequency range is same, epsilon r is same. So only thing what it changes now is that the gap is now much larger. Earlier the gap was small, now the gap is larger. Let us see what results we get here. So let us start with S11. S11 is less than minus 47 dB. So here is a line for minus 40 dB. This is minus 50. You can see that this is less than minus 47 dB over the entire range. Let us see what is S21. You can see that S21 is 0 0.01 dB. Okay, so you may again think oh losses are very small, insertion loss is very small. No, the reason is since we have designed it for minus 30 dB, very little power is going to the coupled port. So most of the power then goes to the port 2. Now let us see what is S31. It is about minus 29.7 dB. The desired was minus 30 dB. As I mentioned, that connector losses may be there. So that will compensate connector losses say 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 or 0 0.3. So that will result into approximately minus 30 dB. Now let us see what is S41. S41 here is 
less than minus 76 dB. If this is the curve here, you can see this is minus 70, this is minus 80. So, if you now take the difference of these two, that is 46 dB. So, you can see that the directivity here is very, very high and that is what is the desired characteristic. A few things I want to mention. So, we have manufactured these things, we tested these things also. There was a one small problem which we actually experienced and that was aligning these two lines exactly, you know, at a separation of 5.2 mm. Okay. So, what happens the two lines have to be really put exact parallel and there is all the possibility when you are trying to align this, there may be an error of even 0.1 or 0.2 mm. Okay. So, what we notice that because of the misalignment, this number S41 does not come out to be minus 76 dB, but it actually becomes poorer. So, I can tell you a better way to do the fabrication is that instead of fabricating the one strip separately and the another strip separately, what you do? You actually get it fabricated. Let us say we had used CNC machine to do the fabrication. So, what you do? Instead of fabricating these two separately, what you do? You join two thin lines, very thin lines let us say over here and over here, okay? very, very thin, maybe of the order of 0.1 or 0.2 mm and then get it fabricated and then put it on the connectors. At the end connectors, these thing will get supported. Once you have done the soldering and other thing mounted, then you just remove that very thin connecting strip. So, this way what will happen? You just, you know, take a knife and cut it down. So, now what will happen? During the fabrication itself, the separation has been maintained very good. So, if you just remove that, now the fabrication will not lead to much of an alignment error at all and you can get a much better result. So, today just to summarize, we talked about coupled microstrip line. These coupled microstrip lines are actually speaking good for realizing coupling of minus 10 dB or minus 20 dB or minus 30 dB. They are not very good for realizing tighter coupling which is let us say of the order of minus 3 dB or minus 6 dB. The reason for that is if you want to design very tight coupling, then the gap between the two lines become very, very small. So, in the next lecture, we will talk about another type of a coupler where we can get a tighter coupling, maybe even a 0 dB to minus 1 dB to minus 2 dB up to about minus 10 dB. So, till then have a good time, we will see you next time. Bye.